Okay, guys, we're here today for Marcelo Garcia, a huge honor for me. And Marcelo's school in New York City, which is my favorite place in the world. I live here and I trained here from 2013 to 2017. Here's where I get the best, where I got the best results of my career training under this guy here. And guys, uh, Marcelo, if you follow him, he was the guy that everybody was scared when he gets to the back. And, and many other positions too. But he was the type of guy that if he gets your back, you're probably not gonna get out. So if you watch the ADCC, for example, he's the person who has the most submissions and he's just a middleweight and he would compete in the open class, he made it to the finals, he would tap all the big guys. And many times, always from the back, right, Marcelin? So, Bernard, uh, like you said, we have a great time with, with you here in New York. Man. That was the best time we had with you, you know what I mean? And right, I, you I really share this time with so much love on, on my heart. But the back control is a move that like, uh, it's just almost like just the mount. It's a very dominant position, just like the mount. When you mount someone, it means like you really have the control of the fight. The guy's like underneath, the guy's stuck. But on the back, it feels like it's the same thing because you have the waist control, you have like a, the weight, the, the chest, you don't have the, the, the weight on the person's chest, but you have the full control of someone's back. But what made like so efficient for me, the back, and why I believe it works so well in all those tournaments, not against somebody just small, not against somebody on my side, but against like the biggest guys that I ever compete. It's because the person doesn't see when they attack you. I agree. You're when you're on the mount, you you right on the guy's face. When you mount someone, you right on his face. He sees you breathing, he sees your hand, he sees your eyes. When when I say he sees your eyes, like when you look for the elbow, when you look for the arm, when you look for the neck, when you look for like a, any control the guy is looking at you. But when you have some back, the guy cannot see like what you're playing. The guy cannot see if you're tired. So that's why I believe the back control is so important. And I believe in a solution that not. I believe in go for every time I begin a match, I go right from the start. I go to 100% right from the start. My first move, if I can make you tap in the first move, I will try to make you tap in the first move. So I, I like to begin with that with really high pace. But also, I believe in a good control. When I say good control, I mean like, I don't want to pin you down. I don't want to smash your face. I don't want to like uh, make you give up because I'm going to just squeeze you so hard. I want to control you so I wait to see when you open up. So the back, you get that. The back, you can control someone. You can't stay there. I believe you can stay someone's back like 10 minutes. You can control sure. someone's back for 10 minutes. And then in those 10 minutes, you better believe that your opponent is going to make a mistake. So I'm expecting to control you and wait for you to make a mistake. Obviously, if I can, I'm going to make a tap like the right way. I don't want to just control you. But I believe like a gain the position to make the other person tap. Like you sweep to make someone tap. You yeah. pass someone's butt to make someone tap. Mm -hmm. You mount to make someone's back. And you get someone's back to make him tap. So I believe in this control, Bernard. You can be very strong. You can be taller than me. You can have a, like a, a, a very like a big arms. But I believe when I have the back control, your your energy is not so efficient, like more than mine. I feel like we're more even over here. And obviously, you don't know when I'm gonna attack you. So I believe to have a good seat belt, my hand under your armpit is gonna cover the hand that is gonna do most of the job, what is choking and, and trying to make you tap. So from here, the hand underneath, your armpit is gonna protect the hand on top of your shoulder. And then I wanna control this. Anytime I see I open, because I can see you, but I don't think you can see me. So anytime I see I open, my hands just gonna go to your neck. But to this point over here, I don't wanna just go to your neck, and you can always go to my hand. So I have to make sure like my hand goes to your neck, but I get my hand like I stuck somewhere. And then I'm gonna look for like your, your shoulder blade. I'm gonna look for like that bone on, on the back of your shoulder. That I don't think nobody's gonna feel that, but everybody will, will know like, a, we all have like that, that the, the shoulder blade over here that we can always like a dig a finger over there. So when I see I open on your neck, Bernard, I'm gonna make the, the, the attack, but my hand has to be like a stuck because I know once you go there, you're gonna try to pull my hand. And before you pull my hands, because now my hand is stuck, I can go over there and just kind of peel, peel your hand off. And when I peel your hand off, I can replace my grip and now I'm gonna have a really good choke. And I don't have just like a straight choke, I can obviously like, always do this and then go on my hand and pull and then I can dig a little bit deeper. Depend like uh, uh, how how deep went the first hand. 
if the first hand went kind of deeper, so my 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 elbow is much closer to your to your chin. So now I know like I can go to the rear rear neck toe. But if my hands go deep, but not deep enough to my elbow like to get close to your chin. So now I'm definitely looking for like a hand like a table <laughs> grip, hand to hand, and then I can go to like straight toe. But this is just the beginning. I'm controlling your back. I'm waiting for open and I can go to your neck. But sometimes, especially if the person is technical, his hand is going to be moving fast. His hand is never going to let my, my hand go to your neck. So that's why, Bernard, now I start making my hook works on my face. Now I start to make my hook works like a, against your arms. So imagine like if I have a chance, this leg will, will control the arm. Or, The other leg will control the other arm. So remember, when you fall to one side, Bernard, this leg is cut, but this one is free to pull your arm. So if you fall to the other side, this leg is cut, but this leg is free. So it's not only flexibility, because I don't have that much flexibility, Bernard, but I can work to get your hands like stuck. The same way how I trap this arm, I can even trap the other arm too. And then I will end up just like a, just like a, with the neck exposed. This comes apart like a, why I don't do like a, a, a figure four on your back. Because I don't want to just control it. I feel like if I do a figure four, if I ever have a long leg to do a figure four too. That's another reason why I cannot do a figure four. I don't want to have my, my legs like just stalling over there. I don't want to just have my legs control over there. I want to have my legs like really walking to Trap your arms and make your and make your neck exposed. So the idea is like to make my energy, my body, my strength the most efficient to beat someone even if he's even if he's much bigger or stronger than me. And the way that I believe on that is not to, I cannot have like a fair game. I cannot have your arms against my arms and your neck against like my arms or your arms against my leg. I have to make my whole body against your neck and your arms. And make your yeah. ease with this, man. Yeah, yeah. No, Masani, you were the first person I ever saw start doing this type of thing, like using the legs to trap the arm as well. And it's almost unfair when you do that, right? Because it's like two arms and two legs versus two arms, right? And then the person doesn't have too much option, right? That's the only way behind that I feel like uh, somebody smaller, somebody who is not provided of a lot of strength. I'm not the guy that lifts that much weight. I yep, never yep. did any like a, a condition strength to build yep. like a, uh, yep. muscles. It was always like some, some workout in the gym, some like a, a warm up in class. Yep. So I cannot depend on my strength to beat you. I need, okay. I need to depend on my whole body combined in a very efficient way that are gonna make you like a, not yep. have that much control of your hands or your neck to, uh, to protect yourself. Yep. No, and I think, uh, Marcel, I think that's one reason that people resonate with you so much. Because for example, in my case, I'm 6'3", 220 pounds. Not everybody is 6'3", 220 pounds, but you have the body type of the most of the Jiu-Jitsu practitioners. You know, like you're, mm -hmm. you're not very tall, not very heavy, not muscles, and even though everything worked so well against everybody. And, the, and I think the back attacks is probably like one of the best examples about that. Because as you said, you get there, your first goal is just to stay there right, and look for the opportunities. And then you start working to mm -hmm. get a solution, right? And, and Bernard, um, there's a lot of ways what I feel not everybody spend that much time to understand like the whole circle, the whole combination, the, circle, the whole options. And when I say the whole option, I'm saying the whole option that I know. I'm sure there's a lot of options that someone will figure out later. I, I'm sure there's some options that like uh, uh, someone's going to do their job, they're going to train and they're going to get better in another option. So I feel like we need to try over all the options possible to us to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, no, as we were just talking, like uh, you were the first one that I saw using the legs to trap the arm. And then after that, now I see people putting hooks behind the back, doing all type of stuff. But I'll say one more time, just so we can cover everything here. So you start here and you have the seat belt. If I have an option, I will go to one side, okay. then the, the other side, right? Or but maybe you have an option and then maybe you put me on the other side. And that's okay too. So either way, I can always like a trap you up your arm. So if you decide to go on the other side. But imagine like a, some time, 
if I push over here, it's not enough to my leg reach you. Yeah. I have hands on the same side of your arm, yeah. so either side. Sometimes it's just not enough to make this. So it's not low enough to me reach of my ball. Yeah. So sometimes it's necessary for me to grab with the opposite hand. When I grab the opposite hand, I push your arm much lower now. So now it's easy. Maybe you don't have much flex, maybe you don't have much flexibility. Maybe the guy is much taller, your leg is much farther uh, from his arm. So if it, this doesn't work, I can always go there and go much lower. Those are the options that I feel like we need to look for. But now, imagine like behind, you have only option to tuck in your chin. This arm is isolated, this arm is isolated right here. Now you have to just tuck your chin. Now I can take my time and keep digging under your, your chin. If you start to come out your hands again, I will then grab, get the control again. Okay. And I keep digging your chin. I was saying, I remember they used to say that when you were doing that in the fall, you were thinking like you were, it's in mindset of like opening a can, right? A tuna can, right? Or, or, or even like <laughs> just turn the like key of the car. And like when you turn the key of the car, you can just keep digging over there. And yeah. once you put your hand under the chin, even a very little, little bit inside, now I start lift and walk. And walk. Good. Once I get deep enough, I can walk to get this hand up. Right. Oh, but saying last thing, like, uh, even if you can get a little closer here, camera. Mm -hmm. Talk, can you talk a little more about this thing here? Because that was, when I remember when I was training here, that was one of the things that was the most fascinating. Like how everybody has this little hole here in the human body, right? That you take advantage of, right? Bernard, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a doctor to know exactly what is out the bones of someone's back, but I believe like, like the collarbone over here and the shoulder blade, no, the shoulder blade, I'm sorry. But you, if you grab your, your partner's shoulder, you're gonna find like a good edge over here. But Bernardo, um, to you don't you don't need to have like a, a climbing grip to make someone tap. Okay. But you need to just find a good place to make a grip. Okay. So you don't need to have like a, a very strong grip. What I feel that helps if you can build that and make your finger strong. You just need to find a very good place to grab. And that's so, the... so this place over here, like I I can feel like my my shoulder blade over here. My shoulder is a very good place to, to get a grip. So I feel like as long as I can place my fingers cheap in someone like a, uh, in, in some way that I feel like the other person cannot peel off, that's all I need. Okay. And in Jiu Jitsu, you need to make like your body efficient in a way that you're gonna make your, your opponent give up. Your, your opponent like not have a chance. And I feel like all my energy is not just to squeeze, not to hold some heart, but I, I put a lot of energy on the tip of my finger. I make the tip of my finger very strong so I don't lose a submission like that. Yeah. So if I make a grip, like a, if I'm able to reach like a, the, the back of your shoulder, I don't think like a, even your both hands is going to peel my hand off. Yeah. Maybe I'm not going to be able to climb farther, yeah. but I'm not going to get my hand pulled off. Because yeah. I believe like a, a lot of us can hold all our weight in the tip of your finger. Yeah. So, it's, it's that strong. You can really like get the tip of your fingers in a, in a wall and you can hold your weight over that. So that's why I feel like someone cannot really pull your hand out of, out of the choke. Yeah. Maybe you cannot choke, but he's not gonna pull it out. But obviously, now to choke is another part. Yeah. Now like a, after, after I make this grip and you start pulling my arms, right? Now it's the pain of me to be technical enough to be able to peel this and replace this yeah. grip. No, but sir, you have so many details that I feel almost like we could do one video only about how you take the grip off. I, I, we I could do another video that. only about how to squeeze because there are so many details that you know that, that nobody knows. And, uh, and what I, people always ask, like, what is the secret? What is what I need to do? Like, we need to put time to the details. Yep. And when I'm talking the details, shouldn't be. I don't think people should not be looking to just my detail. They have to build their own details too. They have to learn their own technique. It's good that we are able to expose like a, I, Bernard, I believe I, I like to say, I don't have to say I have the best technique. I feel like a, a lot of results that I have done like a, yeah, a, the new results will show a lot. Yeah. But I like to say that I have put so much time to figure out every little thing. Yeah. Oh, I must say, and I pretty much, I, I, I think I, I probably know what they're thinking when they're watching this, so. And I've been here for a year, so I know the answer, but I want to ask you for them, so. 
But how do you train this? Is it dreaming? Is it doing specific training? Or is it doing sparring? Because you, know, uh, you were great getting to the back, but many people, if they're blue belts or purple belts, maybe they're rolling and they don't even get to the back. So how do you practice? So how do you get to practice that so much? Was was in the sparring? Was was specific training? Or was just like studying at home? Or dreaming? Or what was the key there? Then I have different phase of training. Okay. In the beginning, I couldn't train every day. I didn't have a I didn't have a gym. Yep. That was my back yep. open the door and go yep. that train. I don't have many people train with me. So many times I was in school when I was like a teenager and I was just thinking about Jiu-Jitsu. And when I say think about Jiu-Jitsu, I was like, how I did that yesterday? Or how that guy did that to me yesterday? So it was always a lot of thinking. But today, today we have a drill class. Today we have a training partner that we guys are always there in the same time before class to drill. So that's a way to learn to. But at the same time, like uh, every time we rolling, I enjoy rolling so much. I enjoy, I have so much like a pleasure to roll live. Every time that I'm going live, I'm not going live to just like have butt with each other. I'm going live to try to see what is your uh, normal reaction. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go live, roll with, with you or with anyone different that show up in the gym because I want to I wanna understand what is your habit, what is your, what is your uh, uh, best move. Yeah. I want to I wanna learn that. When I see you doing a good move, I like uh, I don't try avoid that. I try oh. like let me put myself in this guy. Yeah, 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 one thing, yeah, one thing that I am a witness here to say that you are really good at. You are really good, and if someone catch you with something, it's really hard to catch it twice with the same thing. So I heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> you, you might go home and uh, think about that move more than any person. Like, but Bernard, what I think is hard to some people. It's not that hard for me, and what I'm saying is not that hard for me. I don't mind to put myself in a in a bad position, okay, yeah, even yeah, if yeah, I tap, yeah, yeah. even if I tap. And do you know why? Because I want to I want to learn and I want to figure it out. Okay. And some people can call this humble, but this is just like I enjoy to try figure it out. Okay. I, I don't enjoy I don't enjoy just like a, oh, okay today I'm not I'm gonna train with this guy, but I cannot be tapped with that position because it's gonna look so bad. I don't wanna I don't want this guy tapping that position. I like to come here, like, I want to figure out what this guy does back and I want to see how I can avoid that. Right. But then maybe I'm going to get cut and right. that's okay. Right. Because tomorrow I'll be, I'll be here again. Yeah, yeah. Because tonight I'll come back again. Yeah, and and I, that's okay. I, yeah, I have seen you train and get tested and just shake hands and go again and uh, who cares? We need to figure out. Yeah. I feel like the best way to figure out is like uh, make mistakes. Yeah. But we don't want to make mistakes in the tournament over, over and over and over and then in the day of the tournament do that mistake again. Okay. Obviously not. But I want to learn with my mistake. Okay. I want to be able to. Well, so it's almost like a mix of studying, thinking and practicing. Right? So That's what I mean. You cannot say one thing or another. It has to be everything together. Okay. But we have to try to figure out. You need to have like the the desire to really try like what happened why 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 I couldn't do that why yeah. why this is not work against him okay if this doesn't work against him what can I make work against him we shouldn't just go home like oh today I just did uh, today I did really good with that guy and I said no go home and like what what went wrong today or what 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 was new to you to do today that like you want to do tomorrow again. What do you think that was like something that like uh, you can do in that final, of that big tournament that you really wish for? I feel like we need to have that passion to really figure it out. You know? Good, good. No, that's amazing. Yeah, so guys, Marcel shot an entire structure all about back attacks. And as you saw, like, I think we could, we could go here forever with one detail, because one detail leads to like 10 other details. So it's all in his instruction. It's at bggfanatics.com. So make sure to check that out. And thanks so much for sending. Thank you. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel, just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jiu-jitsu faster.